Today we've got a nice problem about when powers of rational numbers are also rational numbers. So in particular, we'd like to find all rational numbers r, which are bigger than zero, such that r to the power one over r minus one is also rational. And this comes from a 1995 issue of the Math Magazine. And in order to make this as easy as possible or as transparent as possible, we're gonna start with the following lemma. And that says if we have two relatively prime natural numbers, then the nth root of their quotient is rational if and only if each of them is a perfect nth power where maybe the bases are also relatively prime. Okay, so let's see if we can do this. Notice this is an if and only if statement, but the reverse direction is, well, pretty obvious. So we'll just focus on the forward direction. So let's suppose that the nth root of a over b is rational. So that means we should be able to write it as p over q with p and q both natural numbers, where P and Q are relatively prime. So in other words, I can say the GCD of P and Q is one. Okay, but now I can take this equation, kind of the defining equation of P and Q, and well, raise it to the nth power. So that'll give us A over B is equal to P to the N over Q to the N. And we might be tempted to immediately say that A is equal to P to the N, b is equal to q to the n, and then be done. But we can't do that quite yet. Okay, so let's cross multiply to get an equation within the integers. So we'll get a times q to the n is equal to b times p to the n. And now we can make an argument that involves p and q being relatively prime. In other words, their GCD is one. And let's note that we'll get something like this p to the n divides the right-hand side of this equation, but that means that p to the n divides the left-hand side of the equation. In other words, p to the n divides a times q to the n. But then, like I said, p and q are relatively prime, so if p to the n divides something which is a multiple of q to the n, it has to divide, well, the other term. So in other words, p to the n divides a. But that really means that a is equal to p to the n times x, where x is just whatever natural number makes that happen. And now we can play the same game with q to the n. So let's see, q to the n divides the left-hand side, but that tells us that q to the n divides the right-hand side, which is b times p to the n. In other words, q to the n divides b. In other words, b is equal to q to the n times y. For, like I said, essentially the same argument. Okay, good. Now, where do we go from here? Well, let's loop those two equations up here. So into this thing right here, and that'll give us something like this p to the n times x over q to the n times y is equal to a over b, which is equal to p to the n over q to the n. But now we can multiply by p to the n and q to the n kind of in an obvious way to build the equation x over y equals one, which is the same thing as saying that x is equal to y. But notice if x is equal to y, then that tells us that x divides the GCD of a with b, because both of these terms are equal to x. So that means it's a common divisor of a and b. But note that the GCD of a and b was assumed to be one, so that means that x divides one, meaning that x equals one. But y was also equal to x, so y is equal to one. So if x and y are both one, then these two equations over here simplify simply to a is p to the n and b is q to the n, but that's exactly what we needed for this lemma. Okay, so now let's move on to the main problem. So now moving on to our main problem, we wanna know when a rational number r creates another rational number via this construction right here. So maybe the first thing to do is look for an obvious time that this happens, and then prove that that obvious case is really the only case. Okay, so what's an obvious solution over here? 
Well, what if we had this exponent was an integer? Well, if that exponent was an integer, then if you raise any rational number to an integer, well, then you're pretty much good to go. So let's see, what would it take for this exponent to be an integer? So in other words, one over r minus one is an integer, which is the same thing as saying one over r minus one is equal to n with, well, n an integer. Well, this is pretty easy to solve for r. We get r minus one is equal to one over n, which is the same thing as saying r equals one plus one over n. Now, let's notice that immediately we're not allowed to have n equal to zero because we've got an n in the denominator. Is anything else not possible? Well, yeah, something else is not possible and that would be the case when n equals negative one. Because if n is equal to negative one, well, that means that we get r equal to zero, but we assumed over here that r had to be positive. Okay, good. So that means that if r is equal to one plus one over n with n from the integers except negative one and zero, then we are good. In other words, we get a rational number. You know, maybe we would wanna check that, but I don't think there's really much to do. Notice that we have r to the power one over r minus one in this case turns into one plus one over n to the n power. But there we've got a rational number to an integer power, so that's you know pretty clearly a rational number and we are good. Okay, so now let's move to prove that these are the only types of r values that make this happen. So far we've worked up to the following claim. And that is, if we start off with a positive rational number, r to the power one over r minus one is rational, if and only if, r is equal to one plus one over n, where n is an integer, except it can't be zero or negative one. And so, really, we proved this reverse direction on the last board via our exploration. Now we wanna prove the forward direction. And we're gonna split this into two cases. And that's gonna be depending on, well, the size of r. So let's say our first case is the case where r is bigger than one. Okay, well, so if r is bigger than one, then that means we can write r as one plus a over b. And we might as well take the GCD of a and b to be equal to one here. Okay. So what does that make our r to the power one over r minus one object look like? So we've got r to the one over r minus one in this case is one plus a over b to the power, let's see, we'll have b over a. That's because we've got one over a minus b. Okay, good. So now let's see where this takes us. So this looks like a plus b over b to the power b over a is a rational number. So since we're assuming it's a rational number, that means we should be able to write it as p over q with um, p and q relatively prime. So in other words, we'll say GCD of p and q is one. So it's a rational number in lowest terms. But then by this rule over here, that tells us that this numerator is a perfect eighth power and this denominator is also a perfect eighth power. You might be worried because we've got this beef power here, but since they're relatively prime, that doesn't really come into it. Okay. So in other words, we can say that this numerator a plus b is equal to m to the a, and we can say that this denominator b is equal to n to the a, and this is gonna be for m and n some natural numbers. So again, that's by our lemma over here. But now we wanna do a bit of a calculation. Notice that a is the same thing as a plus b minus b. I think that's pretty clear. But then that's gonna be the same thing as m to the a minus n to the a. But now what we can do is 
factor that. So let's do that. So this is going to be equal to m minus n. And then after factoring, we'll have m to the a minus 1 plus m to the a minus 2 times n added all the way down to n to the a minus 1. Okay, so something like that. And let's notice that if a is equal to 1, this factorization doesn't work. But if a is equal to 1, then we already have a rational number of the correct form. So we might as well assume here that a is not equal to 1. Because like I said, if a is equal to 1, then we're in the setup that we know works. OK, so now let's also make the following observation. Well, n to the a is equal to b. m to the a is equal to a plus b. So that tells us that m must be larger than n. But then if we replace all of these m's here with n's, we'll end up with something smaller. So let's do that. So that'll give us m minus n. And then upon that replacement, well, notice that we'll have n to the a minus 1 for all of those terms. But how many terms? Well, we have exactly a. So we have a times n to the a minus 1. Notice we've got a multiple of a here. And, but notice we've got a multiple of a here being multiplied by natural numbers. So we know that this is bigger than or equal to a. So let's see what we ended up with. We've got a is strictly bigger than a. But that's a pretty clear contradiction. So what did that contradict? Well, that contradicted this assumption that we put in like halfway through the calculation that a was not equal to 1. So that means in order for this to be a rational number, we really need a to be equal to 1. Well, at least in this case where r is bigger than 1. Now let's look at the case when r is less than 1. OK, so now let's look at this case when r is less than 1. And here we're going to follow the same sort of strategy. So if r is less than 1, we should be able to write r as 1 minus a over b. And this is again where the GCD of A and B is equal to 1. And A and B are sized so that R is still positive. So what does that mean? Well, if A and B are sized so that R is still positive, that means that we need B to be strictly bigger than A because we want that thing to be less than 1. OK, good. And now. Let's note that if r is equal to 1 minus a over b, then our object r to the power 1 over r minus 1 turns into 1 minus a over b to the power minus b over a in this case. But then applying that minus sign, we'll take the reciprocal of this. Of course, after putting things together, we'll get something like this. b over b minus a to the power b over a. So again, that's by applying that minus sign to take the reciprocal. And now, well, we can do essentially the same thing that we did before. We're assuming that this is a rational number. So that means we set it equal to p over q, where that's a rational number in lowest terms. So they're relatively prime. But then applying our lemma, that means that the numerator and the denominator here are perfect eighth powers. So that means we have b, which is the numerator, is equal to m to the a. And b minus a, which is the denominator, is equal to n to the a. And now we'll form essentially the same sort of inequality. It'll look like this now. So note that a is the same thing as b minus b minus a. Well, I think that's pretty clear. But then that's going to be equal to m to the a minus n to the a. Now we can factor that only in the case when a is bigger than 1. But note that just as before, we're only really looking at the case when a is bigger than 1. Because if a is equal to 1, we know we get a solution. So here we can factor this as m minus n. And then we'll have the same kind of thing. We'll have m to the a minus 1 added all the way down to n to the a minus 1. But then again, just as before, we see that m is bigger than n. That's because here n involves this minus sign. 
Okay, but then we can apply the same sort of inequality here to get this. This whole thing is bigger than A. So again, here we have A is strictly bigger than A, which is our contradiction. And then contradicting this assumption up here that we put in that A had to be bigger than one. So that means also in this second case where we assume that R is less than one, the only types of solutions we get are when this numerator is equal to one. And that finishes this result. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, Subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.